Thanks for everybody for coming out for the Meet Out event. Um, it's absolutely one of the most positive events that takes place in the year, and it's really nice for us all to be here together for it. Um, food Empowerment Project is an all-vegan food justice organization. We're all volunteers at this point in time, but what we work on um, goes beyond just veganism and advocating on behalf of animals. So those of you who aren't vegan or vegetarian, you'll miss that part of my normal talk because I'm going to be focusing, kind of doing an abbreviated version of the work that we do. Um, again, we, <clears throat> as an organization, we have a very broad overview that we work on. Um, we work on access to healthy foods in communities of color and low-income communities. A lot of people are unfamiliar with the fact that in low-income communities and communities of color, including right here in San Francisco, you have um, people who don't have the same access to foods that, that everybody else does. They don't have the same access to fresh fruits and fresh vegetables, nor do they even have the options of eating meat and dairy alternatives if they wanted to do so. Um, we find this to be, we actually did a report um, in San Jose and Santa Clara County known as the Silicon Valley of our work on this issue. Um, we find this to be a very serious issue that does not get a lot of attention. But today what I'm going to be talking about, again, I'm kind of just really <clears throat> talking about what Food Empowerment Project does in a very short amount of time, so just bear with me on that. Um, but one of the things we focus on, again, we're a vegan organization. And in being a vegan organization, we encourage people to eat more fruits and vegetables. And in doing so, we feel we have a responsibility on behalf of those people who pick our food. That is, the farm workers in the fields who are responsible for picking our fruits and our vegetables. Regardless if you eat meat or not, every single person in this room eats food picked by farm workers. A lot of times, these are children. Children picking our food, including here in the United States. In fact, in Michigan, there was a young girl, as young as five years old, picking blueberries. That's going on in this country, and unfortunately at this time, um, there's not really enough oversight in order to stop it. If you are familiar with the animal agriculture industry, as we know, abuses take place to animals in the factory farms and the slaughterhouses. Unfortunately, it's no different when it comes to human rights abuses that are taking place. There's no minimum wage set for these workers. In fact, in the state of California, when they actually... The, our state legislature passed a bill that would allow farm workers to be paid overtime, but the governor vetoed it. So pretty much the right that every single worker has in the state of California to be paid for overtime, farm workers are exempt from that. We have children and adults working eight to fourteen hours, sixteen days, uh, eight to fourteen hours, six days a week. Many of them um, don't have any place to live. They aren't paid any type of living wage. They aren't paid to the point where they can actually survive in the communities that they're living in. A lot of them live out on the riverbanks. They live in their trucks. They live in the parking lots. Those few that are actually able to live in what are called labor camps. We actually, if everybody read um, Grapes of Wrath, um, labor camps are still around. They're actually still around here in California. And unfortunately, only about 13% of the farm worker population actually can, can live in the labor camps because there are so few of them. But one of the problems with these labor camps is that they force the people to move out of these labor camps during certain times of the year. So if they have children who are in school, they have to pull their children out of school, and they're required to move 60 miles from that labor camp. So those children are not able to go back into school. I'll be, I'll be asking, answering questions um, at the end, um, so I'll be giving plenty of time for that. We have farm workers in the Central Valley who are dying due to the extreme heat. A number of years ago, we had a 17-year-old woman who died in the field. She was actually pregnant. And why are they dying in the field? One is because they aren't giving enough time for their, during their breaks to actually walk to get the water that they need in the extreme heat that they're working in. Because they're exposed to agricultural chemicals, they keep themselves covered up to lessen some of the exposure, which increases the, how hot that they get. So one of the other things is strawberry pickers. Um, the men who pick the strawberries in the fields, their life expectancy is only about 49 years old. That's how old that these people will live to be because of the exposure to the agricultural chemicals, because of the living conditions in which they are forced to work in. And we aren't even talking just about people who are getting paid. In fact, there's actual slavery taking place in the United States 
for this type of work. In Florida, there were workers who were found to be chained into 18-wheelers. If they tried to leave, they were beaten. They've been threatened. Some of the workers who come over and have their passports, their passports are taken away from them. So they're forced to work um, because the threat of violence happening to them. So that's an area that we feel very strongly that those of us who, who work and advocate for vegetarianism or veganism have a responsibility as well to be informed about the way all of our food system works and be informed about how everybody in the food system is treated. And we have a responsibility to make sure that we lend our voices to the farm workers and we speak out. Another area that we work on an organization, as an organization is a luxury item. And that's chocolate. And I know everybody here just ate chocolate, and I'm really sorry, but I have to tell you the truth about the chocolate industry. One, it is a luxury. Nobody needs chocolate in order to survive. Very different than the fruits and vegetables I just talked about, where everybody needs that. Chocolate is a luxury item. And it's grown majority, 75% of the world's cacao or cocoa industry comes from West Africa. And here in West Africa, you have approximately 1.8 million children who are working in the fields. You have um, children who are carrying heavy loads of the cacao beans once they cut them from the trees. You can see they're cutting them with large machetes. You can see cuts on all the legs of these young children. We're talking seven years old and up um, who are working in these fields. Some younger than that have been found, but it seemed to be about seven to 12 year olds seem to be the most common that are found in the Ivory Coast and Ghana, which is where they're finding a lot of the slavery that's taking place. If they, go, if they walk too slow with these heavy um, uh, loads of the cacao beans, they are beaten, they are threatened. And worse than not is that they're actually slaves. We're not talking about just the fact, these, these children don't get paid. We're all, they go as old as 18 years old as well. They're not paid. They're locked in at night. If they try to leave, they're killed or they're beaten. This is all being done to produce chocolate. These, peop these children don't even ever taste it. So this is the image that got me started on the issue. I actually saw a BBC um, story on it where they interviewed one of these slaves who had escaped. And they asked him, what would you say to Westerners who still eat chocolate? And being a vegan, I listened to what he had to say, which was every time they're biting into chocolate, they're biting into my flesh and they're biting into my suffering. And I thought, that's no different than what an animal would say to me, uh, animals consumed for food. Um, and so I knew then and there that I could not participate in the injustices that were taking place in the chocolate industry. So what Food Empowerment Project has done to try and make this easier for people is we've created a list that we have on our website. We have brochures on our back table that have a link to this. It explains the companies that we actually recommend that you buy chocolate from. And I would love to just tell you, as long as it's organic or fair trade, it's OK, but that's not the case. Unfortunately, they found child slavery in fair trade fields in Ghana. Now, to the credit of the fair trade industry, they got the children out, put the children back into school. But unfortunately, slavery is endemic in West Africa. And they're finding it no matter what. A filmmaker, every time they exited their car and went out to check the cacao fields, they found children. It's too endemic that's going on there. So our chocolate list does not approve any company that sources their cacao from West Africa. We also go on in our list and we talk about companies we don't recommend and we explain why we don't recommend them. Obviously, the companies who don't even respond to us, which unfortunately includes a lot of vegan companies, they don't make our list because apparently they have something to hide. What's worse? Then that, to me, are the companies who claim it's proprietary information. Like number one there, you'll see Cliff Bar. Cliff Bar claims that it's proprietary. We've asked them repeatedly to disclose to us, all we want to know is what country are you getting your cacao from? We're not asking for the names of the farms. We're not asking for any names of any corporations. We're simply asking for what country of origin. Time and time again, they claim it's proprietary. They recently formed an alliance, with the rain they, an alliance with the Rainforest Alliance on where they get their cacao from, which is the same um, sourcing system that Hershey now uses for one of their brands, which is the weakest standard that's out there. 
But again, when we ask them, disclose to us where you're, where you're getting your cacao from, they will not disclose. We encourage people to write these companies. You have a right to know. If you care about these issues and you don't want to participate in this type of suffering that's taking place, you have a right to know where they're sourcing it. And they need to heal the, feel the heat from you that you must know, and they need to be held accountable for it. That's the only way we're going to get these corporations to make changes. Simple email, simple phone call, and um, we need to get all these companies to take a stand on this issue. So again, um, I'm going to go briefly through the things that we feel that people can do to have more ethical food choices. One, obviously, is to go vegan, not participate in a system where living beings' lives are taken from them. There's absolutely no excuse for doing this, especially not in California. Lend your voices to that of the farm workers. They need us. They need us. When Governor Schwarzenegger vetoed that bill, we should have all been right there condemning him for that. Bills come up all the time in our state legislature that we can make sure that they hear from us. There's toxic chemicals that they're trying to phase out, including methyl iodide, which is what they use predominantly in the strawberry fields, that we could be lending our voices. We put out numerous alerts. We have a Facebook page where we ask people, just sign your name. Let's have one less bad thing that happens to the farm workers. We encourage you to buy organic when you can. We know organic is expensive. We also know that organic does not mean that the farm workers are necessarily treated any better. It's no different than animals raised and killed for food, right? Milk's organic doesn't mean the animals are treated any better. But at least the organic means for the farm workers one less bad thing to happen to them, one less toxic exposure for them. We encourage you not to buy chocolate that comes from the slave trade. Again, we provide a list. We update this list frequently. Every time somebody writes us and says, well, you look into this company for me. As long as they're a vegan company, we will look into them. We will contact the company. We have on our website how, you, how we do this. We also encourage people to buy companies such as Coca-Cola for their union busting in places such as Colombia and Chiapas, as well as their privatization of water. And I didn't go into that issue here. We do have it on our website, and it is more about the work that we do. And we encourage you to speak out about all the in-food justices that take place. We have an e-alert. We only send out once a month that you can sign up for, and we always try and have a way that people can take action. Our website is foodispower.org. And we also have veganmexicanfood.com, which is in English and in Spanish at this point. We're wanting both of our websites to be in Spanish, but it's hard going being an all-volunteer group. But um, we have um, all sorts of recipes on our website, and um, we encourage you to take a look. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Correct. Hershey's, and we, um, we don't tackle Hershey as much since they don't make vegan products, but they are absolutely one of the worst. They absolutely do. Hershey's um, is very much responsible for this. Oh, um, I see some of the raw bars are, um, I think, from Latin America. Yeah, a lot, we, a lot on our list, a lot of the recommended chocolates tend to be the raw companies. Latin America is okay. okay. So anybody, you know, again, we encourage you, if you don't see it on our list, contact us, because we want to have every chocolate company that makes vegan chocolates on our list. But most of the raw chocolate is okay. I saw, according to what I've seen, it's just burgeoning, right? Yeah, but that, and, and, you know, sure. Quite well, and I think okay. He's talking about that there's a growing industry of growing cacao in Vietnam, and we've heard that as well. Currently, 75% of the cacao, though, comes from the West, yeah. West Africa. So more than not, you know, if you're buying regular chocolate, it's going to be coming from slavery. But yes, there are, and actually, we've been contacted by companies in Hawaii now that are growing cacao there, and so we're happy to be listing chocolate made in the USA as well um, on our list. So, but yeah, there are other countries now. It's probably methyl iodine, but not for the organic. The organic won't be using that. I don't know about the organics being that large. Um, that may just be good practices by the farm, I don't know.
But yeah, definitely, I mean, strawberries, even for your own health, should be organic because of that. Um, let me get you in the back. You had your hand up. Okay. Right. They, there is unions. There are a couple. I'm sorry. He's asking about unions, about the workers organizing unions. And there are unions for the farm workers. Unfortunately, agriculture is incredibly strong, not only at the federal level, at the state level. And so it's been very, very difficult for them. Unfortunately, you know, we'd love to say if the produce has the union label on it, the UFW, the United Farm Worker label, which was the organization co-founded by vegan Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta, who we also had a quote up from. Um, we'd love to say that, but so few produce at this point in time has, is unionized. They're and not a democracy, I'm sorry? They're not a um, well, unfortunately, they themselves are a, a true union, but it's the fact of what they're fighting against at the Capitol. Again, they're the ones who got the bill, the, the law almost passed until the governor vetoed it to allow them to be paid overtime wages. Well, we so. All right, well, it's, uh, it's a different story. We're also talking about a lot of people who are vulnerable to um, uh, racism, quite frankly, um, that you have people who may ne not necessarily speak English, who may be working in this country absolutely legally, but they're discriminated upon, and that's a problem in and of itself. Is the microphone so we can hear? The questions? The microphone? Is that a microphone over there? Do you want them to use Either repeat the question and then okay. she'll repeat the question. Okay. All right, so as vegans, it's pretty easy for us to you know, look at the food label and find out something vegan. If we're at a restaurant here, we can ask someone for easily. But if we're at a restaurant, you know, they're not going to know how the food is produced. How, how much of an obligation do you think we have to do our due diligence on this? It's a good question. He's asking about what, you know, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you can make sure what you eat, you can read labels. How much can you do on these issues? Um, which I think is wonderful. Um, I would say that I always tell people it's easier to go vegan than it is to really do something for the farm workers in some ways because it's impossible. At this point in time, it's impossible. For the chocolate, that's different. For the chocolate, you can simply not eat it unless you know where it's sourced from. Um, when I say that about the farm workers, it's just that there, I can't give you a list like I can for chocolate. I can't give you a list for vegan products like I can, you know, for meat alternatives or dairy alternatives. Unfortunately, for the farm workers, it's not that easy. We're, you know, it's hard for me because it's important that everybody knows how these farm workers treat it, but it's not an easy fix. You know, it's not like I can say, oh, this is what you do. It's just not that simple. And so it's making sure that you speak out about it, you hear things about it, you try and be informed about it, and you talk to other people about it so they're aware. And unfortunately, that's the simplest answer for that one. And the chocolate is just don't eat it unless you know where it's sourced from. Okay, this will sure. Be the last okay, sorry. Sure, he's asking about the tomato issue and methyl iodine. I, I have to be honest with you, I know more about the ethics side in terms of tomatoes than I do know about the toxic chemical use. Um, the Immokalee campaign, um, the Coalition for Immokalee Workers in Florida are the ones who have gotten, maybe some of you heard about the, the Trader Joe's campaign. All they were asking for was a penny more per bushel of tomatoes that they were picking. And they had to fight Trader Joe's over a year to get just that. Um, they've expanded their campaign, um, and they're targeting a lot of grocery stores on the East Coast, like Publix, that we don't have here. But that is an important campaign, and we do mention their campaigns and ways you can help their campaigns on our alert list and on our Facebook page. But they have been, by putting corporate pressure, getting changes made for the Immokalee workers. So thank you. Thanks, Dixie.